guys and welcome to a new video. You might be asking yourself why I have like the weirdest angle ever. It's because I was going to film and the camera didn't have any battery so now I'm charging the camera while filming and then we ended up here and it's actually like not the worst angle you could have. Today I am going to wrap up my Gotta Think for Autumn challenge. I have had four challenges each month in the months of autumn and uh, well we're in the end of autumn now and I'm going to wrap it up. It's like still like a few days left as I'm filming this but I'm done with all the books and it's better to just wrap it up now. The God of Things for Winter Challenge will be out very very soon so if you want to join me please do and the challenges would be in that video for the winter months of our lives. I haven't done any wrap-ups the last few months because I've only been reading for the challenge. I didn't want to wrap up books twice really. So some of these books I read like two months ago, three months ago and I'm like okay this is not the best way to do it either because now I forget everything that I thought about while reading them but who cares. In November I actually read more than just for the challenge so there will be a separate November wrap-up eventually. Anyways I'm gonna stop talking and I need to wrap up like 12 books so need to hurry a bit. The first challenge for September was called Wet Socks and you had to read a book where a character had a chronic illness slash disease slash what do we even call it? I am really sorry. For that I had chosen Six of Crows Kraus, I say Kraus and Kraus, I don't know. By Lee Bardugo, this follows six outcasts in a society who decides to take on this heist and really they are from a city where like it's really rough and there's gangs and a lot of things. This is also set in a Grisha Wars by Lee Bardugo and it's just great like the magic system and the world is just great. That was like the worst synopsis you have ever gotten from this book because I am horrible but whatever. This book is like really really hyped up. It's one of the most hyped books in the YA book community I would say and uh, I had a lot of expectation for it. I would say that most of them were filled but I only only gave it four out of five stars because I feel like it should have given me more and at the same time I feel like this was one side of the story since it is a duology. This is just half of the story and I just felt like I needed more to really give it five stars. I am currently reading Crook Kingdom and I'm hoping to finish it this month. I really liked it, the writing is really good. I just felt like I wanted a bit more out of the plot and the plot twist, even though there were so many twists and so many things happening, I just felt like it fell a tiny bit flat for me but it was still really awesome, had some amazing characters and the dialogues are just so hilarious. Like seriously the banter that they have together is so great and I really do recommend it if you want a heist and funny and really want like a rough gang of characters. The next challenge was called Dead Leaves and you had to choose a book with a murder that happened on another continent than the one you were living on and for that I had chosen One of Us is Lying by Karen and McManus. This book drew me in really because it was really popular and also I had a sentence where five people walk into detention and four people walk out again and I thought it was really fascinating to find out who was a killer and what really happened in that detention room. Four characters that were following the four survival surviving characters. We really really do get to know them really well and I did like the different characters. The dude who died had his secret gossip blog thing. It was basically Gossip Girl. So we had a lot of enemies and all these four characters had secrets to hide from him so they all sort of had a motive to be the one behind the mur murder. Every time I read a book set in high school and I have secrets, all the secrets are always the same like one of them has cheated or one of them is gay and one of them like is not as perfect as they think they are and it's really really tiring that these are the secrets that people keep repeating like I I don't know if teens really are like this but I have never done any of the things here but okay it's not just in this book it's just the general cliches of the secret scenes have every time you watch a secret reveal thing and it's really tiring and this just fell into those cliches and the reveal itself was quite boring so I don't know I didn't really I didn't really like it I gave it like two stars because I liked some moments in the book and some of the characters were really nice but really a quite disappointed read for me. <laughs> the next challenge was called Don't Forget Your Studies and it was to read a book with less than 250 pages. For this one I had chosen The Traveling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Arikawa. This book followed the perspective of a cat uh, traveling around with his owner where his owner meets 
meets people from his past for different reasons. And we also get a lot of flashback from the owner and how he grew up and what he experienced through these people and how they met him. And it's just such a beautiful story, like seriously. I get goosebumps right now just talking about it. It was so sweet and I understand really why this is a bestseller. Like people love reading books with animals and but it was really sad and heartbreaking and it had some shocks coming along the way it was not just Anne that was beautiful the whole book itself was beautiful and I really really liked it I gave it four out of five stars and I really liked the part where they went to Hokkaido and Sapporo which is basically really nearby where I'm gonna stay in Japan when I get there next year and it was just really interesting and I just love that they went exactly almost there where I'm going and I don't know if you want a really sweet book and also set in Japan you get to travel to the country and also like a heartbreaking but also heartwarming story seriously this is the sweetest thing that you should definitely pick up. The next genre was called Short Days and it was to read a book with a red or orange spine and for that I reread Vicious by V. Schwab in this new nice used hardcover edition. I really reread this because Vengeful was coming out in this same month. It came in September. This is in September, right? I wanted to reread this before Vengeful came out because it was a while since I read it and I, I, I loved it. I Loved it the first time I read it and I love it now. This basically follows villains. We have Eli and Victor and 10 years ago they found out how to get superpowers basically and 10 years later Victor has been in prison for 10 years and he's after revenge after Eli and Eli has been going around killing people with abilities for the last 10 years because he thinks they are an abomination on earth and they're really both just villains so this whole story and the next one as well just follow villains murdering each other and it's just so wonderful and the writing is so good and if you want that Stabby Stabby and murder and really morally great characters you just this is the story for you and I will talk about Vengeful in my November wrap-up but yeah really I just love this so much and I'm sad that it's not on audible because I want to listen to it but you can't have everything in life so we are now in October and the first challenge was pumpkin spice latte and it was to read a dark fantasy book I really I'm still debating the choice of my book, but I read King of Thorns by Mark Lawrence. It's not like it's not like I have anything against this series, but this book was really long. It was it's like 600 pages long and I had really little time to read in October. I read very little in September, like only those four books and only four books in October as well. And this one I used like almost the first 20 days or so, I don't know, like at least over the first two weeks. I used reading this and I felt like I was running out of time to read the rest of the challenge and it was just horrible and it was so long it never ended and it was really really boring I mean I don't really know how I feel about this series I yeah I, I maybe I should say what it's about it follows George who is in the first book like a 14 year old kid who's been going on, on the road killing and raping and basically he's a really big anti-hero and it really he's a prince who run away and basically he comes in these really tight situations where people want to kill him and he gets out of them and in this one he has come a bit far further than that but it's still in the situation where everyone wants to kill him and it's really stupid how he gets out of it i feel like it's a bit too much actually but the flashbacks parts of this were quite interesting there were flashback parts in the first one as well those were my favorites so yeah i wouldn't recommend this for people who can get easily triggered by certain choices of certain characters but i don't know i don't even remember what i rated it i think i might have rated it two stars that's what i feel i should have but i might have rated it three stars but I don't even know. It was sort of disappointing and uh, I uh, the third book I think is even thicker so when will I get to that? I don't know. Not the worst but not the best. <laughs> the next challenge from October is called Atatata Kunai which is the Japanese word for warm and then it's taken in negative so it means not warm and for that I chose another by Yukito Ayatsuji and this is a big big novel again so I don't know what I was thinking for October this was much easier to read than King of Thorns so I went through this much quicker so I'm happy for that this is also the book that has inspired the manga series and the anime series which is really known so you might have heard of it it basically follows Kochi 
who transfers to the school in this little town and he quickly found out that their class is cursed and a lot of people start dying and we're really just trying to find out why we are cursed and what happened and how to stop it. It's really interesting. I just feel like this was a bit weird sometimes but I think that's because of the translation and as a Japanese student I know how hard it is to translate. I'm not saying that the translation is bad, I'm just saying that some of the sentences and the structure of the text itself just feels odd and unnatural but maybe because that's just the style of how it's written. It was just a bit odd sometimes. Another is not like my favorite anime. I was a bit disappointed of it when I read it and I was hoping this would like clear things up a bit more. I really do want to rewatch it now that I read it and I really did like the mystery. I just feel like it's really weird how things are revealed in the story and I still think they're a bit odd but it works and I did like feel scared and a bit creeped out by the story as well and it's not like a bad book by any means and I really do recommend it if you want something really different from what you normally maybe would read. Not that I know what you usually read you who are watching but you understand what I mean. So I gave it four out of five stars feeling like I couldn't quite give it five because of some small things that I just explained but it was still really exciting. Really easy to get through and some nice twists here and there and I think that anime made a really good job taking the atmosphere of the story on the screen. The next challenge for October was called Blue Drippa, which is like a Japanese expression which mean, basically means the blood is running but that sounds so strange in English. It was to read a thriller set in Norway and I read Frelsland by Jonas Bø. This has an English title as well because it has been translated into English but now I can't remember it. It's probably like The Saber or something like that. It's the sixth book in the Harry Hula series so you can check it out if you want to. This is really popular in Norway and really popular outside Norway so a lot of people have actually heard about it and read it. And Michael Fassbender played him in the movie that flopped so yay. I, I am running through the series and I'm not really being that impressed but they are sort of growing on me a bit like it's getting more exciting and some details are really good and I remember this was quite interesting I think. I don't like recall. Oh my god now I recall. It was a character death in this and I still do not approve it. It was... nope. Nope. I didn't read this after all. Just forget about it. I can't spoil you but yeah. It was okay. I think I gave it 3 out of 5 stars and then um, it was about murder and this series follows a uh, Norwegian detective called Holly Hula who solves murder and he's a bit controversial and he's an alcoholic and it's 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 okay it's sad in Norway so it's cool the next one in the series is now the most popular one of all of them so I'm really interested to see how I will feel about that and apparently that one is really scary so yay the last challenge for October was called dead bodies and it was to choose a classic called classic, classical, classic, I can't speak, horror book and for that I read The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Okay, I have heard quite a lot about this of course, like that's what you should do with known classics but oh my god this was so weird. It wasn't really what I expected but it never is with classics and some of the parts were really good and really excited and I was like oh my god and some of the parts were so tedious and long and I was like Please stop. It's really short. It's like 240 pages or something. But the ending was so weird. I didn't think that that was how he died. Sorry, this is like a 250 year old book. If I'm spoiling you, I'm... I, I don't know. I was really surprised and I feel like I had read somewhere before how he died. And then I thought that that was how he was gonna die along and then he died in another way and I was like, what? <laughs> but it was really weird to see how Dorian just unraveled and I don't know, I feel like I should take like classes on this to really understand it because some parts were really weird. But I'm glad I have read it and it was interesting. And uh, yeah, I give it like 3 out of 5 stars. It was okay. And now I can say that I read a classic, so I'm cool. We are now in November and I've probably been talking for way too long, but who cares? And the first challenge for November was called Cozy Blanket and it was to choose a book with a pretty cover. I chose A Skin Full of Shadows by Frances Hardinge. I can never say that name. This follows Makepeace, who grows up like in a really religious place and then her mother dies and she has to move to where her father came from who is like also dead so yay but 
there she finds out a lot of things about the family. I don't know how much to say, but like spirits can go inside of her. So she has a spirit living inside of her and there's a lot of things going on with that. I don't know what to want to say like without spoiling too much, but I feel like I need to say something so you will want to pick this book up because it was so wonderful. It was like a beautiful little adventure. The writing was just so easy to fall into. You were just like running into the story and it was just so wonderful and beautiful and it had a lot of nice traveling and wonderful characters and the ending was super sweet and I just I approved this book in so many ways. It was adorable and cute and a bit spooky and nice and it's about ghosts and I don't know I don't know what more to say I didn't know what I was getting into I just picked this up because I've been seeing it around but I didn't know what it was about and just not knowing so much just made the story even more wonderful and I gave it like four out of five stars and when I like a book I just say wonderful like a billion times so that's how we are now. The next challenge were called Not My Life and it was to read a slice of life manga and for that I read Flying Witch Volume 6. Obviously, if you want to read this, don't start with volume 6, start with volume 1. This follows Makoto, who is a witch and she moves with, to live with her cousin and his family and just really to be training up to become a full-fledged witch. And it's just all these short, cute stories and things that you experience and magical, wonderful things. It's like the cutest coziest thing ever. It is and has an anime so I recommend watching that and if you don't want like a super complicated and hard manga to start with if you are not used to reading manga I recommend starting with this because it's really really easy and just adorable and yeah I am using adorable a billion times as a word who cares. The next challenge was I want to sleep and that was to reread a book you read last year and for that I read Turtles All the Way Down by John Green and I also listened to the audiobook and the audiobook was really really good by the way she was a really good narrator but oh my god I've forgotten some details in this book and they were intense to listen to that's all I have to say they were whew, that's me thinking about it this book follows Asa who with her best friend tries to get this award to find the dad of her childhood best friend who is missing who is also a billionaire and she also struggles with OCD and anxiety and a lot of other things and it's really just her mind unraveling but also being who she is and so many things so many fears she has is come across in this book so I don't I can't even talk about it straight here but it's really really a strong book like it can really just mess with your head in a way that you feel like you can relate. Not of course everyone can relate but I felt that and it's really strong in that way. It's really hard to talk about, I don't know what to say but it's a wonderful but tragical book, I don't know what to say even. It has some strong parts, that's what I'm trying to say and it really gives across not even a message, it's just this girl struggling with all these things and you just follow her and you're like oh shit people are like that not like in a bad way but you also can feel like you're not alone i cannot have a coherent thought about this book apparently as you can tell but i gave it four out of five stars just because i feel like the plot falls a bit flat like the things that are happening are like just there to be happening and it's really just about asa but then of course some things had to be going on with Asa so I don't know it's a really really interesting open-minded book that I think everyone should read and learn from really I can't I yeah bye the last challenge was called fuck everything and it was to read a book based on a game or that has been made into a game. Really a challenge for me that my best friend gave me was to read The Witcher and to play The Witcher before the new year. So I read The Last Wish which is written by Andrea Z. Sapkowski which I can never pronounce, I'm sorry. And this is like the first book in the Witcher series. Some people don't consider it the first book but who cares about those people. And it was really fun. It's like short stories but all the short stories connect with another bigger story going on. So that was really interesting and I just got introduced to the world and the characters and it's not like a coherent plot as I said since it's short stories. So I'm really excited to get through the third book in the series where the story is one coherent story but 
it was really interesting. The Witcher is, if you don't know, a dude called Geralt and he's basically trained and made into be able to kill monsters and get paid to do that job. So we get to see him meeting different monsters and everyone has a different story and it's it's great. I really like the introduction to this world and I'm supposed to play Witcher now. I don't need to finish the game but I should at least get some hours into it but I need to do before the new year. Right now I'm really busy with school so I will start it when I'm done with school and probably suck a lot and rage quit so that's fine. So yeah that was it. That was all the books I read. I gave by the way The Last Witch 4 out of 5 stars and uh, we are done. I have been talking probably for a billion years. It's fine. I was like 12 books. It's okay. You will see me soon in the God of Things for Winter Challenge and I hope you join me. You don't have to. I will just do it for fun. I don't know why I did that. Bye! <laughs>